In a world where humans and monsters cannot coexist, a demon spawn named Hellboy enjoys his time while protecting the world from the monsters. However, his true fate awaits as the Blood Queen is reborn. Hellboy shall prove that he has good heart beneath his thick red skin. In England during the Dark Ages, King Arthur leads a small group of royal guards towards the highest point of a mountain. Nimue the Blood Queen is waiting at the top of the mountain for King Arthur alongside her trusted accomplice Kaneda. But King Arthur and Kaneda has different plans and betrays her, as he believes that humans and monsters cannot live in harmony. Although, they have already made an agreement to bring down Nimue. King Arthur's troops throws a spear directly at Nanyu at her chest, pinning her down at the large tree behind her. Nimue screams but is still complacent that the mortal weapons cannot hurt her and her wounds will heal eventually. King Arthur whips out the Excalibur, which is the only weapon that can cause damage to Nimue. He starts slicing her into pieces to restrain her from using her powers. Nimue's blood fills the gaps on the tree behind her leaving residuals of her power inside the tree. King Arthur and the others puts her dismembered body parts into multiple caskets locked by a blessed iron chains. Each soldier takes a box containing the remains of Nemu to be scattered across the world to be guarded by the future generations to avoid the Blood Queen's reign on Earth. Back at the present day, Hellboy arrives at Tijuana to find Esteban, his missing partner at Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense. Esteban went missing after going on a mission then went silent weeks after which alerted Hellboy and the others. He enters a wrestling ring where he finds Esteban wearing a costume fighting wrestlers for entertainment. He introduces himself to Hellboy as Kamazots as he believes that the old Esteban is dead. Hellboy attempts to convince him to return back to base for a proper debriefing for his last mission. Although Esteban wants to fight Hellboy inside a ring to show off his new power. Esteban starts to throw punches straight at Hellboy, which deals heavy damages. Hellboy starts to get serious and retaliates with his own set of punches, thus removing the costume of Esteban. Revealing that his partner is now a vampire, he immediately throws him off the edge of the ring. But unfortunately, he lands at the pole which strikes his heart ending his life immediately. He runs to his friend as he turns back to normal, but as Esteban dies, he thus warns Hellboy that the end is coming, and him by his true name, Anangan Rama. Meanwhile, at a distant land, Groagach, a monster like a pig man, pays a visit to Baba Yaga, they both had grievances against Hellboy, so Baba Yaga commands Gruagech to set Ninyu free in order to exact the retribution they both desire. Back at the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, Hellboy returns to his father named Broom who is glad that he returned in complete shape. He inquires as to what Esteban meant by Anangan Rama, and Broom replies that he is unsure. Broom then informs Hellboy that the Osiris Club in England is looking for his assistance in hunting some giants. The following evening, Hellboy arrives to the Osiris Club, where he is welcomed by Lord Adam alongside the other members of the club. They are all fascinated by the mere presence of Hellboy. After some time, Lady Hatton meets them at the Hall of Osiris, where the club members are talking with Hellboy. She explains Hellboy's origins to him, that Rasputin attempted to transport something from another realm to be used as a weapon during World War II with the help of his henchmen. Luckily, Lobster Johnson, a renowned Nazi hunter who entered the area and murdered Nazis before ordering Rasputin's execution, assisted the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense in reaching the location. Meanwhile, Brew was ordered to murder everything that emerged from the Nazis' gateway, but instead, after seeing the newborn Hellboy, he decided to adopt him. The following day, Hellboy and the Osiris Club members prepare their improved spears that is powered by electricity. They all use horses as a means of transportation then pursues the giant trails. But as they reach the end of the bridge, they instead turn on Hellboy and starts trying to end him by repeatedly impaling him with the electric spears. After receiving multiple stab wounds, Hellboy succeeds in killing a few people, but they've successfully corner and electrocute him in the river that weakens his defenses. Luckily before he passes out, a giant and two other giants appear and begin slaughtering the hunters before the leader can deliver the final blow. After some time, Hellboy wakes up to see the giants feasting on the Osiris club members' bodies. He finishes the job and attacks the giants. Thrown around by the giants, he still manages to chop off their limbs, pull out their eyeballs, and just kill the giants with the use of the trees and their own weapons. But after the encounter with the giants, Hellboy falls asleep once more and sees a van with multiple people who takes him somewhere safe. As Hellboy wakes up from being unconscious, he's saved by an old acquaintance named Alice Moninen, who has the ability to hear the voices of the dead. To ensure that Hellboy is okay, Broom sends numerous top soldiers to break into the Alice's residence. Hellboy complains towards Broom outside about the Osiris Club attempting to murder him. Broom is alarmed with the fact that Nimue is alive somewhere and that her final body part is at the Osiris Club headquarters. 
Meanwhile, an agent from M11 arrives named Daimyo, an agent from M11 who was collaborating with a BPRD to defeat Nanmu, is introduced to Hellboy by Broom. They are required by Broom to take Alice with them on the expedition for added manpower. Before leaving, Broom hands Hellboy a suitcase where it contains a new heavy pistol for him to help him fight his enemies. He compares it with a father giving his son Lego for compensation. After some time, the crew arrives to the Osiris headquarters. They can't help but notice that blood and dismembered bodies are everywhere where the perpetrator murdered them mercilessly. Alice hears multiple ghost voices inside the building where she rushes forward and guides Hellboy and the others inside. Later on, Alice touches Lady Hatton's head when they discover her body so that her ghost might speak to them via Alice's mouth. Lady Hatton informs Hellboy that his true destiny will be realized now that Nimid is free and looking for a king. As she disappears and returns to Alice's mouth, the encounter Gruagach, he is carrying the final piece of Nimid. Hellboy pursues Gruagach, but he flees after Nimid when he was blinded by a bright light. An illusion caused by Nimu appears to his subconscious thus creating an image of herself. This confuses him with a vision and plays with his emotions on how non-human creatures are treated. Hellboy shoots the image of Nimu which he almost shot Damio. Although, Damio reaches for his pocket as he feels uneasy where he injects himself some green serum to stop the uneasiness. After the encounter, Hellboy explains to Damio and Alice how he came to know Gruagach. He shares that when Alice was a newborn, fairies kidnapped her and replaced her with a changeling. Her parents required Hellboy's assistance, where Gruaget revealed his actual form when Hellboy used iron to lure the beast out of his disguise. Gruaget was humiliated by Hellboy, and he has sought retribution ever since. That same day, the fairies brought Alice back unharmed. As they return to M11 base, Hellboy enters the room where Broom is reading multiple books that contains information about Nami. He confronts Broom and demands to know why he didn't kill him when he came out of the hellhole by the Nasus. Although Broom replies that he saw a large potential in him, but Hellboy flies away furiously while thrashing the door. In the meantime, Daniel leaves towards a weapon specialist for a crucial weapon. He asks for a customized buller that is blessed by the saints that can kill Hellboy if necessary. Back at the M11 base, Hellboy clicks the elevator to leave the place. But the elevator keeps on saying that it is going down instead of up repeatedly. The elevator transports him to another familiar realm, where he spots in a distance the house of Baba Yaga. As he enters the house, it slowly ascends from the ground leaving no chance to escape. Baba Yage then welcomes Hellboy into her home and offers some food at the table. But he declines after seeing that the food ingredients are human remains, mainly babies. Meanwhile, she offers Hellboy information towards Ninu's future plans in exchange of his eye that he previously took from her. Hellboy did not waste this opportunity and takes her offer. She shares that Nimu does not have her full power unless she recovers the blood from the tree at Pendle Hill where she was dismembered by King Arthur's Excalibur. Baba Yaga then seals the deal in disgusting way as she licks Hellboy's face. He endured the lick just to get the information, but as Baba Yaga was about to take his eye, he tells her that he did not mention when he will give his payment. This trick makes her mad and starts to curse him saying that all the ones that he loves will suffer for his actions. She then controls the house to tilt Hellboy straight to the door. He falls as he is transported once more to N11 falling back to the room where Brune and Alice are staying. He shares the information that Nimi is still incomplete and she will head towards Pendle Hill where she was dismembered by King Arthur. But he is still mad at his father for not being honest pertaining his origins. Later that evening, Damio is piloting a helicopter towards Pendle Hill. Alice is reading articles on what are the agendas before on Pendle Hill. She reads that tongues are cut in that hill and more individuals are killed in that area. Meanwhile, she asks Damio on what the connection between monsters and him is. She also asks the cause on his large scar in his face is. Damio refused to answer, but Alice insists that she will keep bugging in the tell where he got the scar. However, he gives in and shares to her that his squad is training in Belize. One local tribal elder came asking for help that their village is under attack by a man-eater. But as they were hunting the monster, the situation got reversed and the hunters became the hunted. The man-eater appears to be a large jaguar that attacks all of his squad member, clawing his face and leaves Damio the only survivor of the encounter. As he finishes the story, they arrive at Pendle Hill where Damio informs Hellboy and Alice to be ready for an ambush or any attack from Ninu's forces. Meanwhile, at the top of the Pendle Hill, Gruagach and Ninu cuts a scar at her palm to extract her blood from the tree to acquire her full power. She unleashes an undead army to halt the arrival of Hellboy, but this does not stop Hellboy from slowing down. 
Hellboy shoots some undead army, but Damio tells him that it is almost midnight and he must stop Nemu. Alice and Damio assures Hellboy that they can deal with the enemies on their own. He sprints towards the hill to halt Nimu from recovering her blood. Alice and Damio shows off their fighting skills and deals with the undead army with their guns in brute force. Although, Damio feels uneasy again and whispers to himself that not now. He injects himself with the green serum to ease the feeling. As they are about to be outnumbered, Alice notices that her punches can extract the souls of anything that she touches if she wants to. Side by side, Alice and Damio finishes the remaining enemies before catching up to Hellboy. Nimu finishes to recover her blood from the tree, the monsters gather to honor their queen. Later on, Ganeda and her sister witches shows up to ask for mercy to Nimu for betraying her. But she holds a grudge towards the witch sisters, she kills Ganeda's and leaves Ganeda alive, she hands Nanyu her thorny crown as a peace offering to secure a higher chances of survival. They were abruptly interrupted by Hellboy as he shoots her at the eye and provokes her. Gruagach asks her to turn him into a stronger being to end Hellboy. But instead, she slaps him for insubordination and tells him to follow her towards the portal that she is about to open. She tempts Hellboy to come over and reign with her to the new world, but Hellboy rejects her as his heart is still pure. Finally, Alice and Damio catches up to the hill, although Nemi has other plans. As Nemu and Gruagech flee via a portal, she removes a thorn from the crown and fling it at Alice's neck, poisoning her. Hellboy and Damio are distracted, where Ganeda shows up to assist the process of removal of the poison from Alice. She orders them to hurry and locate Merlin as he is the only one that can remove the poison. After traveling to a very far island, Alice is brought to Merlin's grave by Hellboy and Damio, where he awakens after decades of slumber. Merlin cuts the thorn and rescues Alice, but he also renders Damio and Alice comatose so he may speak with Hellboy alone. He explains to Hellboy his true origins that his mother was human and that he is a direct descendant of King Arthur. Excalibur is his alone, and he alone can vanquish Nenmu. Merlin uses his last drop of life to make the sword appear, but when Hellboy reaches out to take it, a vision of himself appears. He has a complete set of fully grown horns, riding a dragon and descending to Earth to slaughter humanity. For fear of bringing about the apocalypse, he declines to accept Excalibur, and Merlin crumbles to dust as he dies in disappointment. Back at M11, Broom receives the news that Nimi is causing massive plagues all over England. Room briefs his men on what they are facing as he waits the arrival of Hellboy and the others to help stop Nemu. Sadly, Nemu arrives at M11 where she wreaks havoc and to set up a trap for Hellboy. Back at the island, Alice and Damio recovers their consciousness after being rendered by Merlin. Damio asks what happened, Hellboy tells them that apparently he is the last descendant of King Arthur that can wield the Excalibur. He adds that he did not take the sword as he will be causing the end of the world after he ends Nemu. Damio cuts him off to inform them that Nimu took over Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense. But as soon as they arrive at the M11 base, there are corpses scattered all over the place. As Hellboy is about to break down, Alice assures him that his father is not yet dead as she cannot sense her spirit. News plays behind them where the reporter is outside Street Paul's Cathedral are heavily guarded by the police as there is an unknown assailant inside. Damio swiftly drives towards Street Paul's Cathedral to investigate what is going on. They are welcomed by the massive form of Gruagach, where Hellboy provokes him with all his might. Gruagach gives in, and as he rushes to headbutt Hellboy, he hits a pole where it causes enough force to make the cathedral's pillars fall. Large debris falls that traps Damio and Alice in a distance, Hellboy is being outpowered by Gruagach. Damio then contemplates if he should use the green serum, but he throws it instead. Alice notices that Damio's hands are shaking and spars are showing up at his face and body. He then mutates into his word Jagar form and joins the battle against Gruagach, Hellboy engages in combat with him. But even with the help of Damio, Gruagach is still powerful enough to take the both of them in a fight. As Gruagach was about to deal a final blow to Hellboy, Nimu appears and tells him that he no longer needs him. She uses her power to shrink him till he explodes into a pool of blood. She keeps on tempting Hellboy saying that they are the same kind and they must rule the new world together. But as soon as he declines the offer, she uses her power to lift Hellboy dropping him where Arthur's tomb. Beside the tomb is the Excalibur that is hidden beneath the cathedral's floor full of cobwebs. Nimue provokes Hellboy into taking the Excalibur to kill her and fulfill his destiny of being the Ender of Earth. Hellboy does not give in, but Nimue has another trick up her sleeve. She uses her power to drag Broom from the sidelines to kill him in front of Hellboy. Nimu monologues on how Hellboy could have saved his father if he only took the Excalibur and ruled the world with her when he was given the chance. 
both of your fathers would be ashamed to the sight of you. This angered Hellboy even more, where he grabs the Excalibur from the pedestal. The Excalibur activates Hellboy's hidden powers, giving him a flaming crown and engulfing the Excalibur with never-ending flames. As he steps out of the tomb of King Charles, a portal to hell beneath London appears and kills the civilians. Damio from a distance prepares the weapon that can kill Hellboy. Outside, huge demon beasts are destroying London and tearing people to pieces as they emerge from hell. But in a distance, Alice sneaks in at the tomb to let Brune talk to his son before he loses control of himself. She channels his soul so he may speak to Hellboy. Meanwhile, Nimue is adoring a Hellboy's Demon King appearance and offers to be his queen. Brune then speaks using Alice's power and assures Hellboy that he has always loved him and challenges him to live up to his high expectations for him. He believes in his pure heart and will not give in the power of his other father and the deceitful words of Nimue. As he regains himself after hearing his father, Hellboy beheads Nemu, which kills all demons and sending them back to hell. Just before the hell gates close, he grabs Nemu's head and drops it there to prevent her from ever returning. Brune talks to Hellboy as he drops the Excalibur and breaks his horns. Hellboy cannot accept that his father will be gone, but Brune believes in him and is glad that he took Hellboy rather than killing him before. After giving his final words his spirit rests and gives Alice control again. Alice sits beside Damio, informing that the bullet was an error where he throws it. The movie ends six months after, Hellboy, Alice, and Damio are in Siberia later to battle the Atlantis Society and after eliminating every member, they discover Abe Sapien's tank.